everybody! My name is Colleen Evans. I'm Director of Natural Sciences at the Staten Island Museum and today I'm going to teach you how to press a plant. Uh, so herbarium sheets or plant mounts are one of the ways that we preserve plants uh, in museums in order for scientists to have access to them at a later date. Uh, herbarium presses can last a tremendously long time um, decades easily if well cared for. Um, we even have some that are, I mean, in our collection here, we have some that are over a hundred years old, so they can last a very, very long time if well cared for. Um, and you really don't need a whole lot of specialized equipment to make these kinds of mounts. So the supplies you'll need, a uh, newsprint for putting your plant into when you collect it out in the field. You need cardboard, at least two pieces per plant that you press. Blotting paper, if you can get it, also two pieces. Um, if you can't get access to blotting paper, really the cardboard is just fine. You really you need that for airflow. Uh, something to press your plant with. I use a plant press because I have access to one. If you do not, you can use heavy books, so things like encyclopedias, textbooks, RPG books, really big hefty books stacked on top of the cardboard with your plants pressed into it. Um, usually can provide enough weight to get a decent press. Other things you need, you do need labels or some means of labeling. Uh, you want your paper to be acid free, um, so that your regular everyday paper that you buy technically doesn't work very well, um, it'll break down over time. So you do need something that's labeled as acid free. And you want to use a pencil specifically or a pigment based pen to write your labels with. Um, you don't want to just use any sort of pen. Um, that's why I usually recommend pencils just because people have access to those. Um, you also need glue of some kind. Um, specifically, you there is herbarium glue. Um, it's a bit expensive, and really regular white school glue works pretty well um, and is perfectly fine uh, for something that you're doing at home. The most specialized thing you really need, though, is herbarium sheets. Um, so this type of paper is acid-free. It has a very high cotton content, so it's not going to break down over time. And also, it's a lot bigger than your standard sheet of paper. Um, and that allows you to press larger things and have more of a surface area to work with. Uh, so let's get started. Your first step is to go find a plant. So you want to look for something that is either flowering or fruiting and you want to dig it out of the ground as carefully as possible because you do want to leave some roots intact. You don't want to just tear them, uh, just the stems off. And so as you can see, I managed to get a little bit of root um, that has diagnostic characteristics there and then that little plant is definitely flowering. So that one is ready to go. Once you have your plant, you want to arrange some newspaper that you can press it onto. You want to have it ready to fold over so that you'll have newspaper on both sides once you've arranged the plant. You want to arrange the plant so that the leaves, you can see both sides of them. So some leaves you want to leave facing up, some one you, you want to have facing down. And you want to make sure that the plant looks as natural as possible, so don't try and force it into a weird position. Uh, but you do want to try and spread things out so that you don't have everything kind of overlapping and you wind up with just this big lamy uh, bit of plant to look at. You also want to make sure that you've recorded your data. This should either be on the newspaper itself, you should write down when and where you picked that plant, um, or write yourself a label, that's what I usually do, and you put that into the press along with everything else. So you want to have cardboard and blotting paper you want to kind of sandwich it so you'll have a piece of cardboard, a piece of blotting paper, your newspaper, another piece of blotting paper, followed by another piece of cardboard. And those will all get nicely stacked up and into the press. So of course I have a plant press. If you do not, you can totally just use some books. You do the same sandwiching method, cardboard, blotting paper, plant, blotting paper, cardboard, and stack some books over top. Um, and don't make sure you forget your label. I kind of forgot to stick mine in there. Uh, but yeah, at that point, your plant will need several days. So I'm just gonna be tightening up the straps, um, but you would stack your books or use your plant press and leave it in there um, depending on the plant. Certain plants are gonna take longer. Um, this was just like a little herbaceous weed that I had picked up. Um, so it only needs a day or two to fully uh, dry out enough to be ready to mount onto paper. Uh, thicker things, things that are really woody or something like cacti are gonna take a lot longer because uh, they have a lot more moisture in them and are a lot tougher. And so you wanna give those more than several days. They might take more than a week. Um, 
once they've had time to press, you can go ahead and mount them. Um, so I've got my glue all ready to go. I usually water it down a bit. Um, there's several different methods. You could use watered down glue in a paintbrush. You could put it into like a squeeze bottle and do it that way. Um, or some people will put like a baking sheet out and put a layer of watered down glue on it and then just gently put the labels and plants into that and use that. Um, I just prefer to use a paintbrush, especially since I was only mounting a couple things. Um, I use the baking sheet method when I'm mounting a whole lot of stuff all at one time because that goes a lot faster. Uh, so you want to make sure you affix your label to the paper. You do that at the bottom right. Your label should have the location of where it was collected, the date it was collected. Those are the two most important pieces of data. You also want to have who collected it, so you put your name on it. And if you can identify what it was that you picked up, you should put an identification on it as well. Although since the plant is physically there, technically an identification can happen again later. And you want to make sure it's just good and on there. So I was just adding a little more glue to the corners to make sure the label's going to stick. And then from there, you can go ahead and do your plant itself. So I'm just investigating which side looks nicer because sometimes when you've pressed your plant, you think it looks good, but then you flip it over and oh, the other side actually looks a little bit better. And maybe that's the one you want to have facing up. So I made my selection and I just start painting gently the glue onto the plant. You don't necessarily have to cover absolutely everything in glue, but you do want to get all the major points. So that center bit where like the roots are, I'm getting where most of the flowers are and the leaves, uh, just to make sure that it all sticks to the paper nicely and isn't going to pop right off. And these are surprisingly robust, so while you do have to be fairly gentle, um, it actually is not as fragile as you might think. Um, even something that's really um, herbaceous like this is, um, this little weed, it's a lot tougher than it looks. So once you've got the glue all ready to go, you just very gently place it into the center of your paper and press down um, where all of your glue spots are. Uh, you do want to make sure that there's nothing kind of like weirdly bent, um, because when you return it back into the press, after this, it'll, it might break. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'm going to go back around, you know, double check, make sure that things are gently glued down on um, anything that might be sticking off um, and just arranging it. And that's it. You have mounted a plant. Um, at this point, uh, the glue does need to dry. So you want to cover it with a piece of wax paper or something similar and return it to whatever mechanism you were using to press the plant in the first place. Um, that's going to allow the plant to really adhere to the paper as the glue dries. Um, once that's done, you are good to go. Uh, kept out of sunlight and away from pests, these plants can last for a tremendously long time, as I mentioned before. Um, and with some good data, so a good locality information, um, some sort of identification and all of that, you can provide a lot of valuable data to scientists at a later date. Um, so thank you for joining me this Earth Day for this little how-to, and happy Earth Day, and thank you so much. I hope to see you again.